So yeah, I'm Audrey. Um, and this is Hillary Cutter. Hillary Cutter is the founder of New York City-based Cutter Productions. She has successfully ex executive produced numerous national TV commercials and promos, original programming, docu-series, and branded content for brands like ABC, Under Armour, and Colgate. Hillary is also the force behind Cutter Connections, the creative mentorship program that holds networking events for women in the film and TV industry. So, Hillary. So it's my honor and pleasure to be here. Thank you so much to Fusion Film Festival for having me. Um, so throughout the presentation, feel free to ask questions. Um, I'm gonna start off, um, so just a little bit, um, as you know about us, um, we offer, t we produce commercials, branded content, promos, docu-series, social media content, web series. The, the short form advertising branded content world is there's just so many um, layers and ways to express sort of different visual aesthetics. Um, and so we sort of touch upon all those. Um, and our infrastructure of our company is we represent a roster of directorial talent. And today we're gonna talk a lot about sort of how you define yourself as a director, what's your point of view, um, how do you brand yourself. On our roster we have um, directors who specialize in working with celebrities, comedy, documentary, um, dark comedy. And then we also um, were a concept through completion operation. So um, once we've been invited to, to pitch a project, um, we handle the casting, we book all the crew, we work with motion graphics teams, editorial houses. Um, again, we'll kind of touch upon that. Um, I'm just going to kind of start off with a little mashup of some of our work. to say we've done it all dogs babies cats kids <laughs> everything um, so you're probably wondering like all that beautiful work on the screen how did it get up there who are all the key players involved um, so in the, the advertising production content world there's it's usually a three layer three part relationship um, so I'm going to kind of walk you through briefly um, sort of how that that works um, so typically the way it works is there's um, a brand. So on screen you guys saw Colgate, Clorox, Under Armour, ABC. Um, so there's um, the sort of first tier in this layer of the production process. And usually in that world um, we're dealing with a marketing director, um, a strategic brand manager, um, and that, um, that brand works directly with the ad agency. So there's the brand manager, there's the ad agency, and then we're the third tier in this line of the production process. Um, and the way it works is a brand hires an ad agency to be their think tank, their ideator. That's where all the, the concepts are being developed and generated. Um, inside an ad agency, there's a lot of different roles. Um, there's a producer, there's an account person, um, there's business manager, creative director, art director, copywriter. That's just sort of the basic um, key players and then depending on the size of the account or the brand or the execution, those teams um, are bigger or smaller or have other sort of unique roles. Um, so the next sort of line of the, the process is us. 
So in a typical short form commercial production company, you have an executive producer, um, and then you have a line producer who's dealing with the nuts and bolts and the project management side of it. Um, and then again, depending on how big the sort of production is, this team gets bigger or smaller on a per project basis. So I'm gonna walk you guys through a, a typical scenario of sort of how how we sort of engage with advertising agencies, how do we get these opportunities, um, who are all the key players involved. And I really like to sort of share, again, this, um, this chart with people, because as filmmakers, you might decide that um, there's different parts of the process that you're interested in. Um, if you really like the ideation and the content creative side, you might want to work inside of an ad agency. Um, if you're really passionate about certain brands, there's also like working in, on a brand or in a brand channel. Um, so there's just so many opportunities within the commercial production world that, um, you know, you can sort of, oh, like once you're out in, <coughs> in the world, <clears throat> excuse me, in the world, there's just, there's not just sort of one position. Obviously, everyone wants to be a director, um, but, you know, there's also locations and casting and set design and wardrobe and makeup and, and usually to work your way up the, the chain, there's working in the grip electric department. So, um, next. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about, um, this is kind of more for like the directors who are trying to build their brand, their point of view, really figure out sort of like their position in the marketplace. Um, so whenever um, we sign a director to our roster, um, we always want them to have um, some sort of point of view or aesthetic. So right now we have uh, five directors on the roster and they all have a, a very specific point of view. Um, sorry, we got timed out over here, I think. Or something happened. Hmm. Sorry about that. Um, does anyone have any questions so far about sort of agencies, brands, how the commercial production team works in the whole line of the business? Not yet. Okay. okay. So, how does signing a director onto your roster work? Like, how does that process? I will, um, that's actually the next slide, <laughs> but um, so basically, um, typically when a director comes to me, they're, they're somewhat versed in their area of expertise. Um, usually they have to have a minimum of five spots on their reel that really um, kind of speak to a particular brand or a sort of um, a category that I can sell them in. When an ad agency comes to us, um, typically, um, they're looking for something very specific. They might want a comedy dialogue director. They might want a food director. They might want a fashion director. And so I have to serve up to them this type of director, and I have to show them sample work. So it has to be about five sample spots within that category, that genre, to really um, you know, help them um, sort of consider them as an option. Little technical difficulties. <laughs> Anyone else questions, questions? Question. Yes. So um, with this process, does the script and the idea come to the director or does the, how much uh, collaborative stuff is there between the director and the actual ultimate project? You know in a film yes. there's constant collaboration. Yes. In this case, is it like coming um, from the brand? Every scenario is, is different. So typically the brand, they have a marketing agenda. Um, so it's either they need to market to um, teens or like a 30 to 4 to like 45 demographic or it could be um, gender, diversity. Um, and so that sort of marketing agenda is established on the brand side. And then the agency ideates, they come up with concepts. And we get usually a creative brief, which I'm going to show you guys. And we kind of have to feel out the relationship with the agency to determine how much of our creative input they want. Sometimes they're really interested in having a true creative partnership, and sometimes they hand us a storyboard and they're like, just shoot this, this is our idea. And then we sort of slowly interject our ideas and kind of help them you know, bring this story to life. But there's definitely a balance and kind of a strategy that we have to take deciding how involved we should be because at the end of the day it's a client 
and we have to service a client and do a good job. And I always say that's why we have director's cuts in case we need to create something that you know we're more passionate about when it comes to our own personal portfolios. Um, so again, getting back to how I find my directors. Um, so this one particular director, Arby Smith, came to me a few years, she came to me three years ago, and she had a couple, um, couple spots on her reel and I definitely saw a, um, I saw a lot of potential in her, but I, I didn't think she'd be marketable. And I said, look, you need to get a couple more spots on your reel. You need to really kind of hone in on your specialty. And so she went out and she worked on a couple competitions. Um, she, she won a competition for Lipton Iced Tea and Klondike and started getting some buzz around her work. And so I decided to take a chance on her. And then within um, a couple months of signing her, we, um, we've gotten her stuff for Colgate and Campbell's and um, Glamour. So I didn't want to sort of take the risk on her until I thought she was marketable. So that's the one thing I always tell directors, like you have to go out there and do your work and create your brand and, and find your voice. And then an agent, a manager, production company will start to you know, be interested in you. But it's your job to, to define your, your personal brand and who you are and how you can be marketed. Um, so just kind of that's like one example. Um, and then I'm going to walk you through the slides of the, the five directors that feature on my reel. And again, we have a very specific way that we market them. Um, again, Aubrey comedy storytelling. She's really um, strong with working with actors. Um, and the other thing I love about all the directors on my team are, you know, we're out there pitching them and promoting them in the advertising, commercial, branded content world. But they're also doing, you know, they're developing their own projects. And that's also really good from a marketing point of view. When um, she's out on the festival circuit with her short film, that gives us something to help, you know, create a buzz about her and, and her work. Um, Chandler's actually a NYU Tisch alum. <laughs> Um, and we, um, we have a really fun story. We met on set um, about 15 years ago, and he was a gaffer. And again, for those of you in the room who are interested in like directing cinematography, um, getting on-set experience and you know starting off in roles such as gaffer, or key grip, or even sound, um, where you can develop contacts within the, the production world, um, you know, get on set, get your you know, production skills, and then on the side, build, build your reel. Um, so he started off as a gaffer and then was um, building his reel on the side. And then, again, once he had about five spots on his reel that we felt we could kind of go out there and market him together, that's when he started you know, pursuing the directing career. Um, Jessica Edwards, uh, she's new to our team. Um, she is um, she's based in Toronto. And it was, I was looking to build a roster of female directors. And I really liked, um, she had a very cinematic style to her and it seemed she was filling a gap in, in the roster that we didn't have and she actually started a career off in the advertising brand side so she really what's so great about her is she understands how to speak to brands because she was on the brand side um, and again learning kind of the nuances and how to communicate with brands and understand like what their marketing agendas are it's just really really important because at the end of the day you know it's it's a client um, and you can deal with your personal art projects on the side but you're doing something in sort of the business world that you need to be you know pay attention to um, Jim um, he uh, he's a really interesting story um, former combat camera officer um, was um, working uh, his uh, veteran and was doing a lot of work for the NFL and uh, I had been following his career for about 10 years and saw like a really interesting cinematic um, directing style that he had and sort of like real gritty emotional and um, so we started working at, together about three years ago. Uh, Sheldon, he um, so he launched his career um, as a director through a feature film. So that's like actually it's another way that you can sort of build some traction. Um, his directorial debut was in 2012 at Sundance, um, and then he was getting some attention through that and started kind of building his reel, doing short form projects on the side. Um, and then since that first directorial debut, he's um, really kind of been able to make it in the short form world. But again, still he's working on his features. He 
um, was commissioned by ESPN 30 for 30 to, to direct a, um, a documentary. He was hired to work on a couple episodes of Rebel Music. So a lot of times, like, the commercial branded content world can be a sideline while you're developing, um, you know, longer format projects. Any questions so far? Um, so I'm going to walk you guys through a few case studies of sort of, again, like how this all happens. Um, so kind of just like bullet point walk you through it. We receive a script or a proposal from an ad agency. Then we need to submit a director link. Um, you know, we need to prove to this advertising agency that we have the right director for the project. Then our director will write a director's treatment, pitching their ideas and really proving to the brand and the ad agency that, you know, we understand what the agenda is and we really want to be your partner in this process. Um, once a job's awarded, we go straight into production. Um, so everything from storyboarding, casting, locations, wardrobe, and it can happen really quick. Like we might get a call from a client today um, and then like within two weeks we're already, you know, in production or are flying, you know, to some city somewhere to kind of bring the story to life. Um, what's interesting is the the brands might have been working on this idea for six to eight months. It might have gone through a focus group. It, it goes through testing. They might do an animatic or um, really kind of spend a lot of time. But then once this idea is ready to roll, like they're ready, they're, they hire us and it can go really quick. Um, and then sometimes we're involved in the post-production process. Um, I would like to say that my company really um, the core of our expertise is, is live action um, we're really the experts on the filming the the shoot side of the business um, but nowadays with budgets being so um, tight and and budget challenged um, we sort of can serve up post-production partners to really entice the ad agency to hire us um, showing that you know we can build a great post team too and and give you a really good deal <clears throat> so this is sort of um, example of how it all happens um, like the script comes in um, might get an email from the client doing a, sort of a little breakdown of what um, you know sort of what the preliminary idea is like what we're looking for um, then we submit a director's reel um, and, and the key to the submission is to really um, uh, showcase um, spots on the the reel that you know really speak to this creative basically saying like we've done this before um which it's it's always funny because a lot of times you know we might get a storyboard and it's like oh like a dog doing hula hoops have you guys done that before and it's like oh we don't see it on your reel um obviously one would like to hope that if someone is directed for all these big brands they can do something similar to whatever the creative is but they really want to see it um so we'll send send a submission um, and then we'll do, an, this is just a generic bid, um, we'll do an itemized budget, um, just sort of like outlining, um, you know, what sort of how we see this whole production breaking down. Um, and then like the key to the proposal is all the production assumptions, um, because you never want to assume anything, um, and you want to get everything in writing. So for example, um, like in our proposal, we'll say, um, this this is going to include casting and location and lighting design. Sometimes the client they provide the location. Sometimes they provide the talent. Um, sometimes they provide the insurance. Sometimes we provide the insurance. So this is the outline and the map of everything that you know we're going to provide. Um, we're going to provide a ten hour shoot day if you guys are making creative changes on the day of the shoot and we go into two hours of overtime that's on you to pay for it. Um, so that's why it's important to have everything in writing. And even when you guys are out there doing some of your independent film projects, um, having these type of documents can really save, um, save your wallet um, in any sort of potentially scary financial situations. Um, so communication is key in this business and um, having everything outlined is, is really, really important. Um, so just kind of a little more on like, the terms and conditions. Um, so it's like just a basic budget, um, you know, every shoot has typically a producer, an AD, a DP, production designer, art assistant, um, this has a food stylist, gaffer, um, you know, it's typical breakdown of, of different crew positions. Um, they're pretty standard rates in New York City, um, so it's not like you can um, kind of make these numbers up. Uh, they, they're 
they're out there and, and clients know what the numbers are, um, so it's, pre it's pretty basic. Um, sometimes there's location fees, um, usually there's um, for catering, um, props, wardrobe, uh, all that sort of goes into the budget. Uh, typically, a client will give us a, a breakdown of how much they have, um, so there's not this guessing game of, you know, putting a budget together. Um, they'll tell us, you know, we have a range of maybe 100 to 200,000 or we have X amount for production, X amount for post-production. Um, so in that first phase, when we're trying to get the job, we, um, we send in the reel, um, we send in the budget, and then we'll do a director treatment. I'll, sh I'll show you director treatment in the, in the next slide. Um, and then once we get the green light, the job's awarded, we want to work with you guys. Um, this particular job, they didn't have storyboards, um, so we hired a storyboard artist to really pencil and detail out the scene. And again, this is the map and the Bible of the shoot, so there's no questions of, oh, why didn't you get this shot or why didn't you get that shot? Well, it was in the storyboard, you signed off on it, and we got everything you told us. So then if they ask for things later, we have proof that they signed off on it. Um, and then throughout the pre-production process, we're working in partnership with the advertising agency on um, props and wardrobe and talent and you know where are we gonna shoot this thing. Um, and then we, the account director on the advertising agency side is the liaison to the brand manager. So all this information that we're sharing with our advertising liaisons, the account people are sharing with their brand liaisons and filtering that information back to us. And sometimes the brand team has a lot to say, sometimes they're totally trusting of their ad agency and they're like, you know what, you guys understand the brand, you know what we're looking for, like we trust that you're going to identify the right props and wardrobe for this um, this project. Ah, something happened again. <laughs> Any questions so far? No question. Yes. Um, I was just curious when you mentioned the director's creative treatment. Yes. Um, is it? pure text or is, is there a visual component visual. to it as well? I'm going to show you in the next, okay. um, the next um, sample. Oops. Oh, it's really nice. Perfect. Um, this is sort of behind the scenes. It's all coming to life. And then this is, this is the spot. <laughs> At this age, it's tough getting kids to eat well, or eating at all for that matter. But when they do finish eating, at least you know they'll brush. Download the free My Bright Smile app. Five educational games, a two minute brushing song. One less thing for parents to worry about. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> all that work for 30 seconds. <laughs> we actually did nine spots, though, so it was a little more. Um, uh, so, again, um, here's, like, another example. That, that one's scripted, narrative, um, very specific, props, wardrobe. Um, this is a documentary-branded uh, commercial campaign. Um, so, it's the same process. This is the email. That sometimes we get scripts and storyboards and, and visual boards, and they have this whole thing thought out. Sometimes we get an email like that. We need a director for minutes working with people in docu-style sort of way. Okay. Um, so then we'll submit a director reel um, that's in line with that email that we got. Um, and um, this particular campaign, so we did get invited to, to, to submit, uh, submit the link. And usually the ad agency picks three production companies that are invited to pitch. And it will come down to creative and budget. Um, so, <clears throat> to your question, this is a, a, a few slides from our director's treatment. Um, this is typically sometimes like 10, 15 page document. Um, just talk about directorial style, like um, B-roll scenes, uh, interview. And um, one of my directors and I, we always like to say it's kind of like the love letter to the ad agency saying like, oh, your creative is so amazing and beautiful and we can visually see how this story could come to life. Um, and so that's kind of a few slides from a director's treatment. Again, we go through the whole process of budget. Um, this particular um, campaign, 
was um, it was a out of town shoot. Um, so uh, for this particular campaign, the ad agency they gave us the talent, <clears throat> and we filmed in the um, the talent's homes. So <clears throat> that was sort of all you know worked out before. Um, it's travel job, obviously. Agency has to pay for you know bringing our director and our DP um, and our producers to whatever location we're filming in. Um, sometimes um, you know when we're dealing with real people, we might pull some wardrobe from their closet and then kind of fill in with um, outside wardrobe. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and this are some behind the scenes of um, this particular shoot. Um, so this um, scenario, um, the Colgate was a two-day shoot in a studio in New York City. This was a seven-day shoot in Albuquerque, Boston, and Virginia. Um, exterior, interior scenes. So as you can see, like, in the commercial advertising world, you can go from, like, shooting on green screen one day to, you know, traveling across the world the next day. Um, and it's, you could be documentary, narrative, comedy, and that's really what gravitated me towards wanting to work in this world is I love the diversity of the different clients we work with, the different types of projects, the different, um, you know, styles of, of production. Lauren, yeah. Could you talk about what it is to be a, a certified oh, yeah. owned business? Yes, of course. Um, actually, I can skip ahead. Um, I'm trying to think if I have a slide there. Um, so, sort of part of, again, I'm talking a lot about defining your personal brand as a director and how you can create a real and uh, a visual static that makes me interested in you. As a company, there's a hundred million of us, even just in New York City. Like, how do we power through? How do we, um, how do we compete against all the production companies in New York City and beyond that are doing exactly what I do and provide the same services? Um, so for me, Really, like what I um, how to separate myself is, you know, we're boutique, we're small, um, we have really strong personal relationships with our directors. They're not just a number. Um, you know, we want to have a real relationship with them. Um, but also being um, a woman um, owning a production company in New York City, that's also um, a, a key selling point. There's there's not a lot of women um, who are running production companies. Um, there's not a lot of women like advertise in production space. Um, so about uh, eight years ago, someone had asked me if um, I considered getting my business women owned certified, and I was like, oh, "What's you know, what does that mean? I'm a woman, I own my business. Why do I need certification?" Um, but there's actually like a government um, and a, a corporate agenda where um, businesses like Pfizer and Pepsi and Disney, um, they want to diversify the vendor pool and the relationships that they have with companies like mine. And so there's a, an application and a vetting process where um, if you are women or a minority, you can apply to get your business certified. And then um, there's a lot of networking opportunities in that world. So um, once you go through the, the process of sharing, you know, um, all your financials and um, you know proving that you're a sound business and and you provide the service that you provide um, then you um, there's different vendor fairs so we've participated in vendor fairs with Disney and Pfizer and Pepsi where they they sort of invite women and minority owned vendors to come in and pitch our services and and sort of you know uh, give us opportunities to to participate in this crazy competitive business so but you know like anything um, you have to have the goods and the real and the presentation to stand up against competition like there's no handouts um, so I always like to say like we were a thriving production company before you know we got the certification and now it's just opening more doors and giving us sort of more rooms to walk into to prove that you know we're a viable business Um, any questions? Any more questions? <laughs> what was your personal career trajectory in the advertising short film? Um, so I, um, I went to Syracuse University. I studied TV film production. And as an undergraduate student, I was, you know, really just focused on um, making cool projects and, you know, had, um, <coughs> had my eye on documentary filmmaking. I thought that was something I wanted to do. 
And it really was um, the first job I landed in New York City was working for a promo commercial production company. And I, like, my eyes immediately lit up. And, I, and at the time, we were still shooting on film. Um, and I walked into this office, and it just felt like there was, like, a lot of magic and movie making going on. But it was, you know, for the short form content world. And I was like, so you guys pretty much do the same thing that, um, you know, like movie, like the same, it's the same process. Like there's casting and filming and editing, and it's just that it's being delivered into a 30 second story and, and you get paid and you can have health insurance and <clears throat> you can live in New York City. I was like, sign me up. <laughs> um, so really it was just kind of um, like through networking and um, through like my alumni network at the time, I got this like opportunity and I just, I immediately fell in love with it. I just, I just love this whole idea of being a filmmaker, um, but sort of not having to um, raise money for a documentary or be like a starving artist in New York City. And I always said to myself, you know, if this is like a way that I can make a living in New York City, um, working um, in this advertising space, <clears throat> and then I can always do my, um, you know, personal projects on the side. And, you know, throughout my 15 year career, like I've, um, Worked, I've produced numerous um, short films and a couple of documentaries. Um, I've, be, I've been able to support like all my artists um, who I now represent, like through like their um, their creative pursuits. So um, really, it was just kind of a little bit of luck and kind of getting the right first job at the right time, but then really falling in love with the process and um, and sort of a job that could um, support me living in New York City. So. Any more questions? How did you transition from working there to um, creating your own brand? Um, so for the first, I worked for five, three different companies over the course of five years. And um, it's kind of just get back to being sort of like a real male-dominated industry, um, where I had three three male bosses um, of, you know, in these three different companies. Um, in almost all the companies, I was the only woman in the company. And I was really uninspired by that. I was just like, you know, like I just, I kind of, I want my own voice and I want to kind of be a team player and I want, you know, just, it just, I was really kind of dissatisfied by like the spirit and the energy and like some of the misogyny at like one of the companies. Um, so um, I just, I really wanted to um, just kind of create a voice and a brand for myself. Um, so, and I just, I loved um, curating artists, I love supporting artists, and actually, like the other thing, I don't think I really identified this when I was an undergrad, because um, you know when you're working on your film projects, like everyone's like director and DP and editor and producer, and I kind of played all those roles. Um, I was like never the one who like when you first got like teamed up into your group projects, and people were like, I want to direct, I want to edit. I was just like, I just want to make a good project, and I want everyone to work really well together. Um, so it was sort of, I guess, slowly developing producing skills. Um, at the time, I didn't really know that. Um, and that also is one thing I identified really early on in my career is like, I didn't want to be the writer or the director or the editor. I really just, I wanted, I wanted to be the producer. Um, and so through like my first five to seven years working in the business, I really surrounded myself by creatives who I wanted to curate and manage and like help them see their voice and their vision and kind of be the cheerleader on the side, like helping them develop those skills. Um, so that like that parlayed with wanting my own voice and my own brand and then also loving to support artists kind of slowly morphed into having my own brand and company. Any more? Question? Should I try to? What? How are we doing on time? Maybe just like. Oh no no! How like time time? Am oh, I like I don't know how like should I be speeding through or? Oh wait, there's a clock right there. Okay, we're good, we're good. Okay, um, I'll show you like one more case study. Um, just is this helpful? Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure. Um, but again, like the exciting thing that I just I love to share is like all the opportunities because sometimes people. Um, you know, they don't, they don't want to be on set, you know, they, they love the process, they love being creative. Um, and so like working inside an ad agency is such a, a great, um, 
another option even as an artist or a filmmaker um, because you are in like the ideation content world and then you get to work with the production companies you get to help hire the directors um, so like as your sort of brains are kind of processing all this and you're trying to figure out like you know what what you want to what you want to be when you grow up um, you know it's it's exciting to learn about all these different phases and layers and tiers of of this industry because um, there's there's so many job opportunities out there and I just think it's ni it's nice to know um, especially when your parents like call you in a couple months and they're like oh, do you have a job yet in New York City because um, like cutting off cutting off the uh, the the payment soon um, so again another another uh, process um, again this is an email and then I always like to emphasize like because some people um, like oh, I just want to like open up my own business and I can do this um, the, these emails that come in like good like 10 15 years of like business development relationships they don't just kind of fly out of the sky um, it's like a lot a lot of networking a lot of staying in touch um, was out last night hosting clients for four hours for dinner like I would say sometimes it's like one and done you do one job you might never see the client again um, so you always have to a you know do a really good job because that might be the last time you ever work with these people and I never take it personally because it's business and it's competitive and people have their own personal agendas so you have to keep hustling and making sure that these emails are coming in every week um, so it's another one uh, and this was um, this was an interesting project um, it was a um, they wanted to do a live um, doodle battle um, to promote a new um, a new uh, laptop for Lenovo it's a sort of artist um, drawing tool and um, this this campaign went through 37 um, phases of ideation so when we first got the treatment from the client it sat on it like version 9 um, by the time we finally like they finally decided how much money they wanted to spend and when the thing had to get shot and delivered and sort of what the um, you know really what they wanted to do with it it was like version 37 and you know we're there just like they're like what do you think and I'm like well how much money do you have um, well that idea is not gonna work for the money you have but well we can't you do this can't you do that I'm like you know it's either time or money or a new idea like you guys got to figure it out um, so like we're always kind of on the sideline kind of helping rein them in because sometimes they have these like big like they wanted us to hire a robot and we we called a robot company and in the Netherlands and they're like it's two years to build the robot they want and they're like but we want to shoot in two months I'm like guys this is this isn't happening we gotta we gotta work together to like to rein you in and, and make this this execution realistic um, so there's a lot of that um, and then this actual this so this particular agency they they did do a little sort of research inside um, so these pencil boards actually were part of the brief that they sent us again sometimes it's just like an email or it's a phone call like oh we want to do this great um, when where and how much um, so they did do a little more um, creative development <laughs> inside the agency um, and they sort of drew out like kind of how they vis like what the vision of was this for this piece and again they're like okay at the end of the day we just we want to do an improv battle with um, with two artists to, to help promote it um, and then this was sort of the space we built so th for this particular execution the ad agency hired us to direct um, and shoot and edit the piece and then they hired a live event company to pretty much put this live event on that would um, then be the video that we edited um, so I can show you guys that I would describe my artistic style as a contemporary pop art. There's a little influence from street art. It's really kind of aggressive and gangster and villainy with a mix of like some cartoon goofiness. It just depends on what I'm going after or what I'm trying to do. I don't know if I have a strategy. I just like just ready to draw. My strategy going into an event is just sticking to what I know. I get a lot of energy from the crowd and the DJ and I'm just going to have fun. This is how it's gonna go. We're gonna have artists versus artists. And at the end of the five minutes, we're gonna test it. Are you guys ready?
And then we actually um, we hired a casting agent to help us um, source and got the artist and the DJ. Um, so the, it was a very similar filmmaking process. Um, obviously, sort of a little different than some of the other stuff you saw. Um, and then, kind of just to get back to the whole like supplier diversity, women-owned business thing. Um, like so, after I got certified in 2010, I um, really started. Um, focusing a lot of my business development initiatives in the women-owned business space. And ABC and Disney are, like, really huge advocates for, um, you know, diversifying their vendor pool. And in 2012, I was invited to present um, at NAB. So NAB hosts a, an event, and um, they invite um, 10 businesses to pitch um, their um, portfolios to a room full. So NAB? Um, NAB. Um, and they invite a hundred, um, they invite ten businesses to pitch to a hundred ABC, CBS, and NBC executives. So in 2012, I got invited to present the company to a room full of people, and the head of production at ABC came up to me and he said, "Your work's fantastic. I definitely want to get you in the mix." Um, and he's been a huge advocate of our company since, and so we've worked on multiple um, promos, and um, it's just been a really fantastic and, and loyal relationship. Um, and again, um, the sort of supplier diversity initiative got me in the room, but it was really the work that kind of got the attention and the notice. And then also then getting the work and doing a good job um, and then continuing to get, get the opportunities. Um, so this is just one um, example of, um, again, like sometimes the emails are fun. And, you know, the cool thing is like over the, you know, you become friends with your clients and they're people that you want to see and partner with. and. Um, so it's a fun little email from my, um, my contact at ABC. And, um, and then this is kind of just an example of sort of, okay, like we can hit the ground running. Like, what do you guys need? Like, is, um, we did a promo at Ryan Seacrest. Like, is he coming camera ready? Um, do you need, a, um, like, what kind of um, camera do you want to shoot on? So a lot of, um, there's like always a lot of back and forth. Um, um, this is what we want. This is what we want to spend. And then our team, you know, help sort of build um, the needs and, and the under like we sort of want to understand like what, what it is that we can do to, to make sure that we can do a good job for you guys. Um, so this like potent this scenario was like get the call, there's a couple emails, the ABC person like flies into New York and then within like 72 hours like we're on set like shooting a promo. Tonight, the American Idol journey begins right here on the American Music Awards. These three hopefuls didn't make it to Hollywood, but the judges are giving them a second shot at a golden ticket. We'll hear them sing tonight during the show, and you'll get a chance to vote for your favorite. The winner will be revealed tomorrow during the Dancing with the Stars finale. It's all up to you, right here, right now. This is American Idol on America's Network, ABC. So promos happened really quick. From the time we got that email, the time we shot it, um, like the spot was already airing like within like four or five like business days. Um, so as you can see, uh, a company like ABC, they need like smart, reliable, like trustworthy team members because if they need that spot to air in you know seventy two hours, they can't have like some you know low rent operation like doing this for them like they need a team that can just make it happen quickly and efficiently and in a smart way um, and that's why this particular client keeps coming back is that we you know we keep providing and delivering good quality content to them Can we, could you talk about cutter connections and what you do with them? Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> good timing <laughs> um, so um, kind of getting back to my whole brand of being a women owned business and like really kind of helping educate um, young young people in business um, it's really important for me um, it's really important to to mentor young people because um, you know I sort of just I, I kind of navigated the business on my own I I learned things I liked didn't like people I, I felt inspired by people I wasn't so inspired by um, and then there's just so many dip like I keep saying there's just so many different avenues like you could work in visual facts, post-production, you can work on set, you work in an ad agency, you can work on a brand team. Um, and so I really love to to put all these amazing um, experts in a room with um, young women who um, are also sort of trying to 
um, navigate the industry and, and understand like what all the possibilities are. Really excited about you know some possibilities of Fusion Film Festival, and obviously we have a very similar mission, celebrating women. Um, and it's just it's really important again if you're a woman, not a woman, like having a mentor, having someone that you can ask questions um, and get advice from, and and really kind of start to kind of craft like your own personal voice and and kind of what the career path is that you're looking for. Um, and then. I always like to say, like, whenever I'm talking about the company or showing any of our work, like, I can stand up here and tell you how great we are. Um, but a couple of our clients think we're pretty cool, too. Um, <laughs> so this is um, one client. Um, it was actually fun. We, um, this is a client that I work with 10 years prior to this particular um, project. And um, we're, like, as far as um, marketing and branding the company, and that's always been really important to me is really having a voice in sort of social media and marketing and so kind of just keeping that buzz going on about who we are and like what we're doing um, and this is an example of a client who just was staying in touch and he was connected to the company he knew what we were up to he just didn't have the opportunity until 10 years after the first time we worked together so I was the first person he thought of when he needed to you know to to do another project which is really nice um, then you know, sim simple testimonial, um, but uh, yeah, again, for me, like, just kind of building the company and the brand, and um, it's all about staying relevant and just listening to the clients, being a strong communicator, um, and, and like, as you saw in, like, the budget documents, being extremely transparent and, um, you know, overstating, like, exactly what this relationship is about and what we're providing and what you're providing, just so... At the end of the day, you can get um, comments like this, so that they'll they'll keep coming back to you. And that that's it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but again, like I want you guys to kind of walk away from this like feeling inspired and like thinking about new ideas on you know like what your career paths are, how you're going to define your your brand as a cinematographer, a director, or Maybe you're learning that, you know, um, I don't want to be a director. I like kind of um, putting the whole, you know, team together, but I don't need to be behind the camera. I want to be part of the process, but it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, the creative person in charge. So, yeah. We have a few more questions. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So I guess, like, for recent grads, what do you think is the best, um, like, skills or, like, experience that we should gain into, like, moving into, like, more independent production companies mm. or like production side of ad agencies? Um, I mean, I think like the first thing to do is really identify what um, sort of what expertise you think you want to develop. Mm -hmm. If you want to be an editor, if you want to be a visual effects artist, if you want to be a director. Um, so like that's like, that's step number one. Like, okay, what's the path I want to try? Now you can try, like I have friends who have gone down the editing path. They realize they don't want to sit in a dark room for the rest of their lives. So like, you know what, I think I need to kind of get back on set and feel, you know, try that experience for a while. Um, so if you want to be an editor, you should get a job, you know, entry level job at a post house. If you really just want to learn the nuts and bolts of production, um, freelance, you know, production assisting is, you know, the en entry level entrance into film production. We hire freelance production assistants all the time. Um, if you're on set and if you want to be a cinematographer, getting into like becoming a gaffer or a grip and kind of leading um, those departments, um, wardrobe, makeup, you know, it so really depends. There's always entry level opportunities and um, apprentice, you know, you can apprentice under somebody. Um, so that's sort of like the first step. It's like, which, um, what lane do I want to kind of be um, like an entry level? assistant or admin or apprentice to and then kind of build that but then again you know you don't, you're not stuck anywhere you know you might sort of start in one department and then two years later learn oh you know this is working out and every anything you do in this business any internship any sort of it's always going to be another line on the resume and it's always going to help guide you and build your your reel or your resume so it's like no job 
um, or opportunity was like a bad mistake. It's just always a learning experience. Can you talk about what a great interview is like and what a bad interview is like? What, what happens in an interview that mm. turns you on or turns you off? I, I find that when people are really um, just like natural and um, honest and calm and um, <clears throat> they're not trying to sort of overstate um, their experience because like at the end of the day um, you're most film I mean maybe as a as a undergrad you had like an award-winning film but the second you <clears throat> enter the you know the workforce you're like your star award-winning um, film and undergrad like no one can like they, they don't care about it you know like I remember like walking into like one of my first interviews like with like my portfolio and I was just like opening it up like hey here it is and I'm like, um, you know it's like entry level position and we just want someone who knows how to like answer the phones and um, like get us coffee so I think like that's like my one advice is just like kind of you know hold back on showing the work and the portfolio like it's um, most of you like if it's like entry level like it's it's going to be an admin, like, you know, runner, coffee, printing, you know. So, like, focus on, like, what you can bring to the table as far as, like, making sure those tasks can get done. And then once you're in the job, that's when you start to network with people around you and you communicate, like, what your long-term goals are. Like, I, you know, I, I always, like, you know, if you're a PA on set, yes, like, make sure, like, every you know the director has coffee or like their special like iced tea or whatever it is that they need um make sure everything is looking like it's working and you're not you know you're contributing to the process but also if there's any time to sort of discuss your career goals with people on set in a natural way you know it, it's important to communicate that to people because um most people don't want to be set pas and runners for the rest of their lives um so you need to start building your relationships and your contacts and communicating and that's like why whenever i'm in a room full of people i like to kind of open up the room and and you know i want to hear what you guys want to do and i want you guys all to hear what you want to do because you're all each other's advocates and you could all be on set one day with each other i mean there's you don't know i actually um, last week went into a presentation and an editor in a job jo an editor I worked with 14 years ago is it that long ago? Um, he was he runs a post-production um, department at this um, at the agency I was presenting to and he, he came to the presentation um, and so like you just you never know when you guys are all gonna kind of see each other's faces again um, or when you can help each other out so, and a lot of <clears throat> people that I went to undergrad with are, you know, I hire them, like they're, they're uh, Jim actually met him, um, he was a grad student, I was grad, he's not one of my directors, um, and so um, the, you know, my one sort of overall advice is to communicate with everyone what you want to do and kind of don't hide, um, like don't feel like you have to hide your goals or, you know, what your interests are, like, you know, because you think it's you don't want anyone to know or they could like steal your like future job um you you want to be team players and you want to help each other out and you want you could all be working together in a room one day so you know that's kind of the, the overall advice question here uh, yeah. what makes a good uh director is real um i would say just like um a really uh strong point of view aesthetic and again, this is in the, you know, in the commercial branded content world. I'm, I'm speaking to like a very specific, um, you know, sort of world in the industry. Um, but again, kind of going back to um, like if you, if we just kind of look at a couple of these slides. Like, so for Jim, um, like all of his work it's it's emotional, it's cinematic, um, it's heartfelt. Um, he it's and he he's his specialty is in the documentary, um, real people, um, storytelling world, and so really, um, if when you're kind of building your real and kind of and your aesthetic, um, it's trying to create projects that 
kind of match each other and look like each other. Um, whenever a director who comes to me and they have a few things on reel, and like one might be comedy, one might be documentary, one might be like a cool fashion piece, and they're like, oh, and I and I basically tell them like that's absolutely useless to me. Like, I can't brand you, I can't sell you, I can't market you. Like, you have a few really beautiful pieces on your reel, but like from a marketing perspective, I can't do anything with that. Um, so, it's just you know. You want to be able to look at someone's portfolio and like almost feel their work. Like you can just see, you can see their style like on the screen. Like you can already, like these agency creatives are already kind of envisioning their end piece before we even go into production. So if they can see it in your work, then they'll like trust that you can help them bring their work to life.